If you would, go ahead and and take your copy of God's Word and turn to Matthew 27 this morning, and uh, we're going to get started from there. Uh, Whenever I first got started in, in ministry, I was told, always have a sermon prepared, and now I find out why this morning. Uh, but, uh, but, but anyway, it's, uh, it's amazing how God puts things together, because um, this is, is actually uh, something that I've, I've had ready for, um, for some time now, and uh, didn't even think about it when I was going back over, refreshing myself this morning, that the, this morning was the Lord's Supper, even though I, I knew it, but I just consciously had not put the two together, um, but it's so fitting for this morning, I mean, um, fits right in with Jesus sitting at the table with the disciples and uh, the things that's taking place in Judas's life, and, and that's where we're what we're going to be looking at this morning is Judas's life, you know. And um, as you you think about that story, and I was was kind of putting things together. I mean, there's just some folks that you just know who they are just by fir- their first name, you know, Elvis. Oprah, Dr. Phil, Regis, Dolly, Lecrae. All right, some of you may not know who Lecrae is, but I, I know a lot of the, the younger folks do. All right, um, a, a great um, Christian artist. I mean, he's, he's uh, pulling a lot of young folks in um, just through the message that he has. Um, through his testimony that he gives and, and through the songs, which is uh, a lot of them are a testimony to, uh, to his life and, and what God's done within his life. Um, but then when you hear the word Judas, I mean, we all know that we're pointing back to the Bible. Um, Judas basically has a name that has forever gone down in history as a name that means traitor. Uh, I mean, uh, not only just traitor, but a betrayer uh, and or a thief. Uh, in fact, in all of the 12 disciples, uh, Judas, Judas's name is the only one that makes Webster's Dictionary. And here's what Webster defines Judas as. Someone who portrays someone else. I mean, when someone calls you a Judas, I mean, they're basically putting you down. I mean, uh, when someone calls you a, a name, whether it's Judas or, or some of the other lovely names right, that people love to call everybody, all right, um, we know that, that they're saying those and that they're just saying those um, not really with a lot of meaning behind them sometimes, but sometimes with a lot of meaning. And some of those words, all right, we just know that it's not a, a good way that they're calling us, that it's actually a bad way that they're calling us. Some of you are probably sitting here this morning and, and just thinking, you know, of just a name popping in your head that you just can't stand to hear at some point in time. You just cringe at hearing that person's name. But over the years, parents have often looked to the Bible to name their uh, children after Bible characters. How many of you know any parents that has named their child Judas? <laughs> Uh, see, most of the time, that's not a name that somebody wants to give their child because of a name carries a lot of meaning behind it. I mean, whenever your parents named you the name that you have, I mean, there was a reason that they named you that name. And sometimes it has to do with the meaning behind that name. Maybe it's a, a name that's come through the family. Maybe it's... Uh, a character name, right, um, that you uh, name them because of the characteristics that they've had. But we all have meaning behind our, our names. And even after Judas had pre- betrayed Jesus, all right, the, um, those that had the name of Judas at the time, they went and they changed their name. Uh, in fact, uh, Jesus had a brother whose name was also Judas, and he wrote a book of the Bible, and um, we don't have a book called Judas there. He changed his name. 
No other person in, that's written a book that it's, the book is named after them has changed their name. I mean, we don't go around and, and say, first and second and third Pete, or first and second um, Tim. We call them by their full name. But Judas's brother changed to Jude. The only this book in the Bible because of the name of Judas. He didn't want it to, to be... Um, or possibly just, he done that, just said it wouldn't be confused with Judas, the betrayer of Jesus. Now, our name is very important to us. What people think about us when they hear our name says a lot about our character and who we are. And a good name is very important for us to have. Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Having a good name is better than being rich. Many people will sacrifice their whole character sometimes in order to just get rich. They will lie, cheat, steal, and even commit murder. And Jesus' name will forever be linked to evil, just like some of those folks that we know that doesn't have a good name will forever be linked to evil. Proverbs 10, 7 says, The memory of the righteous is blessed, but the name of the wicked will rot. Now, if we have a good name, people know who we are. All right, they're willing to do things for us a lot faster than they are if we don't have a good name. I mean, think about it at work. Um, if you have a good character at work and Someone else, one of your coworkers, all right, doesn't have a good name, and it comes time for that promotion or, or a raise or whatever it is. Who is it that the boss is going to look toward with more favor? It's going to be the one with the better name. But this morning, I want us to take it, take a look at Judas Iscariot. You know what the scripture tells us about him. And the scripture tells us very little about him. But here's some things that we do know. That his father's name was Simon. He was appointed treasurer of the disciples. And he became a thief stealing from that very treasure that he was put in charge of. Judas Iscariot, a friend, confident, disciple, treasurer, traitor. How it must have broken Jesus' heart to know that he was sitting right there at the very table as he was uh, performing the Lord's Supper, knowing that he would be betrayed by one of the very men sitting there at the table with him by a simple kiss. So what is it that Judas was missing from the rest of them? If you would, please stand with your Bibles, Matthew uh, chapter 27, verses 1 through 10. And when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Ju then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, what is it? What is that to us? See to it, see to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord directed me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you this morning, Father, just to um, come in and look at your word, Father, and to... Just take from it what you would speak to us on an individual basis here this morning, Father. Father, let it not be my words, but your words that goes forth from my mouth. For it's in your name that we ask these things. Amen. 
You know, from, from just reading this text right here, all right, we see um, some things that's happening. Um, first of all, uh, as Judas is now trying to show remorse for his actions, all right, he's, he leaves and he goes out and he hangs himself, uh, basically commits a suicide. I mean, this was even before Pilate had uh, finished questioning Jesus. Before Barabbas was released, Judas was dead. Before Jesus was uh, scourged by a whip, Judas was dead. And before the crown of thorns was forced down upon the head of Jesus, Judas was dead. But before the nails were driven through Jesus' hands on the cross, Jesus, I mean Judas, was dead. And you see, the sad part of Judas' death is that after his death, Jesus took and he looked down from that cross on all those who had uh, beaten and uh, cursed at him, all, right? those, all those who had um, just, um, you know, just done all these evil things against him leading up to the cross. He looked down at all those men standing right there below him and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. See, Judas missed that part. I mean, that was something that Judas never had the chance to hear that one day out of all the other people that had done these uh, horrific things to Jesus, he was not able to hear that he could be forgiven. You know, which brings us uh, to the first point of what it is that Judas is missing. And Judas missed forgiveness. Um, now you may be one of those who believe that what Judas did was just so horrible that he couldn't be forgiven. But the Bible tells us in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Um, I mean, God doesn't want anybody, all right, to die and go to hell or be unforgiven, all right, but he will allow you that if you so choose. Uh, and... Judas was included in this. I mean, he, that was not his will for Judas' life, all right? He came so that all could have life. Um, but Judas chose not to take this forgiveness. I mean, it was a decision that Judas made. It, and it didn't come at the decision of betraying Jesus. But it, the reason uh, Judas didn't have forgiveness is because he never came to repentance. He never received that forgiveness that, that Jesus was dying on a cross for everybody to have right then. See, the forgiveness that we need is not, the, um, is, is not dependent on anything else other than one thing, and that is the grace of God. And, and grace is defined as the unmerited, undeserved, and unearned love of God. And Judas needed undeserved love that day, just as much as any of us ever needed God's undeserved love. I mean, he needed to know that the grace of God was able to give him the forgiveness that he so badly needed in that time. And, and, and Judas came so close to forgiveness. You know, if we were to list three things in our minds or, or here this morning that are required for forgiveness, they would be to acknowledge our sin. Acknowledging that we are sinners. And then a sense of forgiveness from God is what we would need. And then third would be the acceptance of forgiveness offered by us. So how close did Judas come to having that forgiveness? You know, Matthew 27 verse 4 says, uh, and this is Judas speaking, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood, and they said, what is it to us? See to it yourself. You know, right there, Judas acknowledged that, hey, he had sinned, that he had done something that he should not have done. Judas didn't even try to justify his actions. Um, you know, uh, yesterday, I had one of my, my friends in um, Heather, Heather brought it to my attention that he had posted it on Facebook. And so as I was uh, looking at it, um, he was talking about how there was this here one person in his house that he was ready to get rid of. And it was, I did it, do it. 
I mean, he was basically putting to death in his house the person called, I didn't do it, because every time his kids done something, all right, and he would ask, all right, uh, Jojo, did you do this? Or, or um, you know, Caleb, did you do this? And it was, I didn't do it. I mean, a lot of us have that problem, all right, is, is whenever um, something happens, it is the first, uh, first thing out of a uh, human's mouth is, I didn't do it. But you know what? That's not the only person. I don't know. All right? Especially trying to make up your mind for lunch after church, right? I don't know. I mean, I mean, just don't these two people just irk you? I didn't do it, and I don't know. But you see, Judas, he didn't, he didn't do that. He, he said, hey, I take full blame on it right here. You know, verse 3 there, Judas seeing that he had been condemned was remorseful. Uh, now, most of us have felt remorse in our life and, and know that certain things are wrong. But it's not then when most of us feel remorse is whenever we know that it's wrong, is it? You know, we're, most of us is probably like um, um, David, whenever Nathan come to him. I mean, you know, he knew it was wrong. He thought he had gotten away with it. But he wasn't remorseful until Nathan came to him and said, you know what? You're the man that I didn't do it, that I don't know. You're the man. Look in the mirror, David. That's who it is. And then that's when David said, you know what? I have sinned against God. You know, how many of us do that in our own life? Do we go ahead and, and just lay it out there and accept it? Or do we try to hide it until we're caught? Now, I don't know why the human nature is to do that. Maybe it's pride. You know, maybe it's uh, just being stubborn. But I know that it's a dangerous game to play. I mean, you, and I want you to understand, you don't have to hang yourself because of, of, of feeling remorse over something. Uh, in fact, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. All right, so right here, Jesus is, is telling us, all right, that the day is the day. All right, all that remorse, all right, all that guilt that's built up in you, you don't have to carry it any longer. Because the day is the day that you can change that. Today is the day of salvation. Three days after Jesus had died, he, he rose again. And Judas was still dead. And as Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection, and he made a statement that would not apply to Judas that day. As the disciples were meeting there in the room, and the doors were locked because they were afraid of all the things that were happening, um, um, basically all the ridicule they were taking from the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood in their midst. And he said this, peace be with you. It's the second thing that Judas was not able to experience that day, was that peace. I mean, all the other 12 sitting there were able to experience that peace that Jesus sat there and taught that before he was, was betrayed by Judas. And Judas sitting there and hearing Jesus talk about this peace that was going to come to them after he was gone. Judas was not even able to experience that peace. Now I wonder if Judas was struggling with the decision even as Jesus spoke about this peace at that table. I wonder if he was even craving a peace that would never be his. You know, the world can never give us peace like Jesus can. And in fact, 
That's the reason why suicide is the tenth leading cause of death in the U.S. But it's the second leading cause of death between ages 10 and 24. Close to 43,000 people die of suicide in the United States every year. You know, we can all look happy, pretend like everything's all great and good, but we never really know what's going on deep down inside of someone's life. You know, they may not be experiencing this peace. They may not have even heard about this peace. I mean, have you ever tried to explain peace of God to somebody? How would you explain it to somebody? I mean, we could sit there and we could explain it to the folks, and, and they're just sitting there like, you know, it's a deer in the headlight look, because they don't know what in the world it is that we're talking about, because they're not able to comprehend this peace because they don't know the giver of the peace. They hadn't experienced his forgiveness so that they can have that peace. You know, when they hear the word peace, I mean, they think about maybe uh, bringing uh, peace to the Middle East or, or maybe peace to some of the things that's happening in our country right now. That's what they're thinking of. But they're not thinking about the peace that Jesus promised to his disciples and he's promised to us today. Now, having peace means that broken relationships are restored. When we are granted forgiveness through the grace of God, then our relationship with God is restored. We are brought to the place where we belong. And Judas missed that restoration. He missed that relationship being put back together that, was, that he destroyed through some of his decisions. You know, it's very doubtful that Judas was able to say at his point of death the same words that Jesus spoke. Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. See, Judas didn't bring damnation on himself at the betrayal. But he most certainly did when he refused to set the relationship straight. It was, if Judas would have just sought the forgiveness that only Jesus Christ can give, then he would have experienced the peace that only God can provide. You know, the actions of Judas before his death point us to believe that Judas sought after power. Which brings us to the third thing that Judas missed because he took his own life. When Judas came to the end of his life, he felt so powerless to cope with the events that engulfed him, most of which were because of his own doing, that he took what seemed to be the easiest way out and added to his sins, which by breaking the sixth commandment, you shall not kill. See, Judas was so caught up in his own problems that he missed the one thing that he craved because 40 days after Judas died, Jesus made the promise to the remaining 12 disciples in Acts 1.8, he said, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Within 10 days of that promise, a power of unparalleled magnitude swept into the world. And Judas missed that one thing that had driven his life, which was power. The power of Christ being given to the disciples and to us that has since changed this world. I mean, there is no other uh, empire, no other kingdom, nothing else that has happened within this world to make the greatest or to even come close to changing the world as Jesus Christ has. The power that his name carries. And the same power that Judas so desired but missed is available to every one of us today. I mean, maybe you're going through some situations right now that uh, you just feel like that you, you can't be forgiven. All right, well, I'm here to tell you this morning, you can be forgiven. 
Chief, um, Paul said, hey, he is the chief of sinners, all right? And if the chief of sinners can be forgiven, then why can't we be forgiven? So he offers that forgiveness to each and every one of us this morning. And, and then he also promises that peace, all right? Um, because our, our lives is in so much turmoil, all right? Uh, we so desperately need the peace of God in our life. I mean, because with everything that's going on today, in order to remain calm during all these situations, all right, I, I'm here to tell you, I'm, it's only by the power of God that you can get through these things, and he can offer you that peace. All right, um, my wife, I tell you, I used to get upset over the silliest little things. She probably would still tell you I do sometimes, still now anyway, but. But over the time of growing in my relationship with Jesus Christ, I, I've come to learn that some of those things that I would get up, uptight about and be stressful about, you know, I just had to step back. And as Tony and Jim so greatly sung a while ago, say, just breathe. Uh, in, in fact, um, as I came into the house yesterday, uh, Heather was actually watching... Um, Dr. Oz, um, one of, uh, as she um, records them and watches them back on DVR, and, and there was one of the doctors on there that uh, was just saying to relieve stress, you just breathe in with your mouth and blow out like a line. You say, ah. <laughs> you know, just relieve the stress. Uh, uh, you know, that kind of felt pretty good, you know. But, um, but, but the to take in and just relieve all that stress and, and just allow the peace of God to just come into our life. And then we realize the power that the Holy Spirit puts within us. The power to go out and, and to talk to those folks that we've never been able to speak to. Uh, some of those, all right, uh, maybe it's that person, uh, the name that you were thinking about at the very beginning, uh, the message, all right, that I, I um, reference to, the, that name that just comes to mind that just irks you. you know, it's only by the power of God that you can go and, and talk to that person, be peaceful about it, and forgiving to them. So you know, the things that Judas missed because he took his life, you and I don't have to miss. Right here this morning, all right, we can, can make it right. We can restore that relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and so as Tim comes and, and he begins to, to start playing, there's some decisions that you can make here this morning. If you never experienced that forgiveness in your whole life, then I invite you down here this morning to come and know the power that God has through that forgiveness. There's nothing in our lives or anything that we could ever do to make God turn his head away from us, from us asking him for forgiveness. Or, or maybe... You, you've gotten that forgiveness, but you hadn't reached the stage of having peace about it. There's something standing in between you and God that's preventing that. Then the altar is going to be open. You can come and, and you can talk with Him and remove that, or if you want someone to pray with you, we'll be here to pray with you. Or maybe you know someone like Judas. Someone who is at the end of life's strings. Don't know where to turn. And God's placed them on your heart this morning. And you so greatly want them to come to know Jesus Christ. The altar is open here for you this morning to come and, and intercede for them. To ask God to make a difference in their life before 
it's too late. So if you would, just please stand. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, we just come to you this morning, Father, just asking you to have your way right here with us this morning, Father. Father, you know what each and every one of us in this building is facing in our life, Father. Father, you know the outcome before we ever even get started. Father, our prayer here this morning is that we would seek you. Seek you to make that change in our life. To give us peace. To give us that power. And to seek that forgiveness that you have given us. Father, don't let us miss it here this morning. It's in your name that we ask these things. Amen. You just respond how God moves in your heart this morning.